Hey, what's going on guys? How's everybody doing today? So we got another brand new Netflix movie that just came out called Kodachrome. And honestly, right after the movie was over and I saw the credits roll, I saw the director's name and I was like, oh shit, that makes total sense. And I'm sure most of you won't know who this is, but Mark Rasso directed another movie that I was very fond of called Copenhagen, which I highly recommend by the way. And I think it's also on Netflix still currently. And if there's anything this motherfucker knows how to do, it's character development and on-screen chemistry. And fuck me gently if he didn't pull it off yet again. The basic plot of the movie revolves around Jason Sudeikis, who's kind of like a struggling music producer, and his estranged father, played by Ed Harris, kind of ropes him into this kind of road trip thing, because Ed Harris is a photographer in the movie, and he finds these old film reels that never got developed. And the last company that can develop this film is going out of business, so they kind of have to go across the country to get this film developed. And Elizabeth Olsen plays his caregiver, so she's also going along for the ride. And then it turns into a depressing road trip family bonding movie. Now, first thing right off the top, this movie has a killer soundtrack, or score, depending on how you want to categorize it. Even if you didn't have the movie, you could still listen to the music and cry yourself to sleep. The music was dope, that's all you need to know. Ed Harris is just a straight up baller in this entire movie. Him and his son haven't gotten along, so he has to kind of play an asshole, and he plays a really good asshole. If you've seen Enemy at the Gates, you know what I'm talking about. And I've honestly never really thought much of Jason Sudeikis, never, like I never really thought he was that funny. But realistically, he's got some dramatic acting chops, like I was kind of impressed. Between this and that movie he did with Anne Hathaway, Colossal, like he's actually proven to be a pretty decent actor. And for once, Elizabeth Olsen isn't playing this naive little girlish type character. And I don't mean in every movie she's like that, but in a lot of movies I feel like she just plays like this young, naive girl who has no idea what she's doing. That's not to say her character doesn't have an arc, but she's a little bit more of a confident character. And there's some cool camera shots, like there's some cool like countryside scenery that's in the movie. But honestly, this movie is really just all about the characters. Like it's supposed to be like a reeled in kind of close quarters character study. And it's like I said, Rezo does a good job with on-screen chemistry. The only thing that could have had a little bit more work was Elizabeth Elizabeth Olsen and Jason Sudeikis' character chemistry. Sometimes the chemistry between Sudeikis and Elizabeth Olsen's character felt a little bit forced. Like, it wasn't so forceful that it felt like you were getting thrown through a window, but it was forceful enough that it was, like, nudging you a little bit. But anyway, guys, this is a very well-done, kind of low-budget character movie. It was a little depressing, but it had a lot of heart to it, so overall, for a score out of 10, I think I'm gonna give it an 8.2. It did get a little bit boring here and there with the pacing, but the really, the main thing that you watch this movie for is the connection between all the characters, and I thought it was good. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Have you seen this movie? Have you heard of it? Hop in the comments. Let me know what's up. Other than that, if you like this review, give me a like, subscribe to all that other bullshit, and I will catch you guys later.